First one millionth of a second after nuclear detonation, the heat is already so extreme that a ball of plasma forms. It's a fireball so hot, it reduces everything inside it to subatomic particles. The core of our star is 15 million degrees Celsius, making it the hottest point in the entire solar system. But for a brief moment in time, it becomes the second hottest point because the core of a nuclear fireball can reach 100 million degrees. To put that in perspective, that's 20 thousand times hotter than the vaporization point of diamond, one of the most resilient materials in the entire universe. So it doesn't matter if you're in a fridge or a bunker or a bunker made of diamond, if you're inside of this fireball, you will get deleted from existence. All this heat radiates outward at the speed of light, instantly scorching anything unfortunate enough to be within view. This real test footage shows the paint getting vaporized at the moment of detonation. It's quite literally a laser engraver, but like, everywhere. Anything combustible immediately ignites on fire, including everything within a mile of this explosion. All the people within a mile and a half would receive third degree burns. It's a burn so bad you don't even feel it. And looking at this test footage, what I find fascinating is that it's not actually windy. What we're seeing is the heat of the nuke pushing the smoke away like it's the solar wind or something. It's just that intense. The shockwave is a sphere of high pressure air that expands outward faster than the speed of sound. In fact, this shockwave is so powerful, it levels up into something even deadlier. When it hits the ground, it reflects back up to recombine with itself, forming what's called a mock stem. It gives the shockwave a razor's edge, shaving the city down to rubble. It's been a few seconds at this point, but the explosion is still happening. The shockwave leaves behind a pressure vacuum, which sucks all the air back in with hurricane force winds. It's not as strong as the initial shockwave, but this is more insidious. The rushing air feeds the flames, which create fire tornadoes that swell to hundreds of feet high. This terror the terrifying reality is called a firestorm and is exactly what happened to Hiroshima. It was a city made almost entirely of wood. One thousand two hundred kilotons. Yeah, this is a megaton bomb. I'm using a tool called Nuke Maps. If you just Google search Nuke Maps, you'll find this. Just plug in the warhead yield of your choice, whether or not it's detonating on the surface or if it's an airburst, and then you just hit detonate. This is the fireball. This is the strongest part of the shockwave, and this signifies where everyone gets third degree burns. This is what the Trinity explosion would look like in downtown LA, but if I put in the B-83 of 1,200 kilotons, that detonation would look like this. It's like almost two miles wide, just the fireball. Now the B-83 is just the most powerful nuke that we currently have in our arsenal. We've tested many more powerful nukes. For instance, the Russians tested the Tsar Bomba, which was a 50 megaton bomb. And this would literally destroy the entirety of Los Angeles. I just turned on the casualties. Estimated casualties are about 3 million people. Instantly. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 15. Verily, or truly I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. I want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, the bondage to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that tell us his truth, and much respect to the Akim out there laboring his work, and peace and salutations to the hopefully elect that are scattered abroad across the four corners of the earth to USA. Shalom. So, what we just read was a, um, a saying from our Lord Yahweh Shai, who was, uh, prophesying about the end times you know dealing with a certain city in which we have found out that that city or that great city <laughs> is speaking about America all right the place of Yahweh by Shema Shah's wrath as uh you know World War three was created to ultimately destroy Esau Edom's rulership by completely annihilating America and as the talks of World War III began to escalate, 
we can see that we are closer and closer unto that day. All right. So um, let's go ahead and grab another scripture. Let's go to Malachi. The fourth chapter. So it says the final admonition. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And that's talking about the great judgment of our Lord Yahweh Bashmasha, in which he's going to cause all these different nations, Russia, China, Iran, America's allies, to all shoot nuclear missiles at this place. All right, fulfilling the Lord's wrath. And not to mention uh, the chariots of Yahweh Bashmasha as well, you know. Setting this place ablaze, and that's going to be the most, you know, frightening day in history. All right, in which we who have received the support, we understand and know how serious this, this these times are, and that day is to where you know we were willing to put off our life and just submit ourselves completely uh, to our Lord Yahweh Bashmal Shai. All right, through obedience, you know, seeking for mercy. And that's what every Israelite should be seeking for, which is preservation from the day of wrath, which would be a day of wrath like no other. So again, for behold, the day come that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. All right. And so the reason why it says, you know, that this day is going to burn as an oven. Well, when you go to. I think that's Zephaniah or Zechariah, the 14th chapter. And around verse 12, okay? So this is a prophecy. Then with the same day, it says, And this shall be the plague, all right? This shall be the plague. And the plague is talking about the missiles. Wherewith the Lord, Yahweh, by Shemel Shah, will smite all people that have fought against Jerusalem. So again, this is the crime scene. America is a crime scene in which all these nations, you know, that have uh, put their hands on the apple of the Lord's eye, all right, dealing with the elect who are allowed to be saved of uh, the Israelites, which is known as Jerusalem, are going to be paid back and punished, and including two-thirds of our people, all right, they're back on the scene of judgment. So it says, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So just like the scene from uh, Terminator Judgment Day, you know, that's exactly what it's going to be like. You're going to have individuals literally melt in the midst of this great day of wrath that's going to burn as an oven. So Malachi 4 and 1 again, for behold, the day come that shall burn as an oven and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly. All right. So the proud Esau and the ones who do wickedly, that being the two thirds of our people, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. All right. So this decree right here is sure. You know, this is going to happen. There's no way to stop it. There's no way to go around it, you know. But the only thing that you can do to escape it is to turn back into your how about Shemal Shah. So that leads me to Zephaniah 2 and verse 1. And so it says, gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. And the majority of Israelites get this scripture right here misunderstood, misconstrued, in which they think that the Lord is telling the whole nation to pretty much come together as one for the sake of being called Israelites. And that's just not the case, but rather the Lord is calling the elect back unto repentance to agree in one mind, in one doctrine, in one belief. You see? So just because you got Israelites that are gathering together, you know, for the sake of just being called Israelites, well, that doesn't make them acceptable to the Most High. 
the scripture clearly says that there's an Israel and there's an Israel of the Most High. So what's going to be the difference between the two? Well, the two thirds, will they call themselves Israelites or not, are not going to obey the gospel. They're not going to obey Yahweh Shai, which makes them outcasts. It makes them likened unto heathen still. You see? But rather the elect, all right, the Israel of the Most High, they will come into obedience through fear. They will fear the report, and they'll gather themselves together and submit themselves unto Yahweh by Shemashah by obeying the doctrine, right? So that's what it means when it says to gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. It says before the decree bring forth, that decree is a commandment. Before the day pass as it shall. Before the fierce anger of the Lord Yahweh by Shemal Shah come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, and this is talking about the same day, all right, that is dealing with um, this great destruction of America, that great city. And so again, this is the final warning for you Israelites, you know, to put away your life, to put off your interests, put off your desires. And sincerely return back into Yahweh Bashim Shah, you know, with fear and trembling, hoping to be saved from this wrath that's coming because it's going to be far worse than what you can ever imagine. It's not like, uh, you know, it's going to be something like where you might just blow up and that be it. The Lord has orchestrated this thing to be the most terrifying event on earth. And so the sins that the two thirds are not going to be clear for where well, those sins have to be accounted for, all right? They're going to have to be their atonement. And so with all the sins that are accumulated from, you know, the time which they persecuted the prophets or the believers from their past lives, leading all the way up until now, you know, these things have to be accounted for. And so the Lord is going to purge and melt Jerusalem, you know, in the midst of that furnace as we'll get. So, it says, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, all right, the lowly, the humble, see, which are wrought as judgment. So the meek, the humble, the sincere will understand the power that they're dealing with and the fact that the Lord brought out his judgment upon us for disobedience. And they will submit themselves again, all right, seeking mercy. It says, seek righteousness, right, seek righteousness. And there's only one form of righteousness, and that is through this gospel this everlasting uh, testimony, all right? So it says, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in a day of the Lord's anger, all right? So in that day, yeah, we want to be hid in the midst of um the chariots as our Lord Yahweh Shai returns with his one great chariot. And we believe that all the elect will be beamed up into one great chariot, but that's going to be the hiding place as you read in um. Isaiah 26 and 20. It says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. See, talking about the um, so called UFO. And shut thy doors about thee, and hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So, the elect are going to be beamed up and hid in the chariots right before these missiles pelt America. And as our Lord said, it shall be more tolerable, you know, than Sodom and more in that day for that city, man. <laughs> you know, so um, it's going to be bad. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So there's a lot of vengeance that the Lord has saved up, you know, for this one day. All right. And um. The true, sincere elect who were born with fear, you know, don't want a part of that. And that's what drove them to uh, repent and come back into Yahweh Bashim seeking for mercy. And so, as the Lord said, he was going to melt the two thirds, as you read in um, Ezekiel 22 and 20. So verse 17, 
It says, And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All right? Pretty much worthless. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver. Because we were the once, you know, the precious jewels of Yahweh Bashem Shah, but we became tainted. So this is the process right now in which the Lord is making up his jewels. He's polishing us up in the spirit to get us ready to be saved in the time of wrath. But the two-thirds will not take heed and um, this word will not purify them in these times, okay? Which makes them worthless. So it says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, because you are all become dross. Behold, therefore, will I gather you in the midst of Jerusalem. All right, was the people for the place. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow up fire upon it, to melt it. And it says, so will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there. Leave you where? In America. As the elect get beamed up, they're going to be looking down at the two-thirds, hollering and screaming, you know, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because in that day, they're going to desire to be lifted up from this destruction. So the Lord said, I will leave you there and melt you. You see? Melt you. Your eyes are going to consume away in your holes. Your tongue, your mouth. Okay? <laughs> and it's going to be a very painful death. He says, Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. And you shall be melted in the midst of rub. Okay? As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I, the Lord, Yahweh Bashemashah, have had poured out my fury upon you. So, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. And as we see World War Three amping up, uh, there's not a lot of time, all right, before this destruction. Of course, you got to have the MOTB that should be implemented. But, um... Shortly after that, you know, you're going to see these nukes fly in which the scripture says that it's going to be uh, 200 million missiles. All right. 200, 200 million warheads, you know, that are going to completely annihilate America. You see. So the only way that you can escape this destruction is by turning back until you how about Shemal Shai and obeying the doctrine. Obeying the gospel. So with that, a Lord willing, you're edified. Until next time I say, Shalom.